As most of us know by now, there are levels to fighting. However, that knowledge isn't as common as one would expect at this point. With how much MMA has exploded over the past few years, most people know just how skilled professional fighters are. However, there are still a select few that are roaming the streets with a chip on their shoulder, thinking they can smoke two packs of cigarettes, eat a rotisserie chicken, and play Call of Duty all day, and somehow they can still outstrike a person who's been doing Muay Thai for the past 12 years. Some call it bold, most of us call it stupid. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at instances where challengers, be it underprepared or not prepared at all, challenge a bit higher than their pay grade and get humbled in the process. Here are trained fighters versus street thugs. We'll ease into things with this clip of KSI getting challenged by, well, I'm unsure who the challenger is here. I'm a rare breed. I'm a diehard martial arts fan, but I can still acknowledge when a YouTuber or influencer boxer has pretty decent hands. KSI is bad, and if the challenger here is as bad at boxing as he is at critical thought, then KSI would have dusted this guy if his security didn't get to him first. Of course, we doubt that this man really wanted that smoke. He was, as they say, clout chasing, looking to propel his image off KSI's. And yeah, that's the name of the game when it comes to influencers. And if you break it down, that's kind of how the fight game works. But you know, usually with fighters, not scrubs wearing camo shorts. A quick shout out to Araco TV for finding this clip. Someone says that you want to fight. Oh, no, no, bro. Huh? No, no, no. Fight who? No, no. Fight me. As I get older, I get to reap the benefits of my knees popping when I get out of bed and having to explain what MySpace was. What a dream. Joe Rogan is a lifelong martial artist. The man kicked his way out of the womb and Imanari rolled as pediatrician. So hitting him up on MySpace to challenge him was a pretty dumb idea. But hey, dumb people make for good content, so I ain't complaining. If I had the chance to roll with Joe Rogan, I'd take it. But I'd want to keep things cordial, seeing as he could rip me in half. In the first part of their match, the challenger attacks with a terrible single leg takedown and is put in a standing guillotine choke for his troubles. Pretty basic stuff works on very unskilled people. Rogan does pull guard to finish the choke, and we start the next bit of action from there. We run it back, round two. This guy still doesn't know how to protect that neck. He gets stuck in an anaconda choke this time, which is similar to the guillotine choke, but with his own arm in there to assist the squeezing of the neck. Another tap, and we go to the third roll. Again, starting from the knees, the challenger tries some schoolyard headlock and gets his back taken. Rogan locks in a body triangle just to make things suck a little bit more for the challenger. And to the surprise of no one, the MySpace challenger is tapped out yet again. We got to thank Eddie Bravo and 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu for the skill and clip itself. How long do you think you'd be able to survive in a grappling match against Joe Rogan? I give myself about two more seconds than this guy lasted. If there's any martial art I'd not like to dojo storm on, it's a Muay Thai gym. Getting choked out sucks, but it's relatively painless. Having a shin bone slap your cranium from someone who conditions their legs by chopping down trees hurts a tad more. The challenger here seems to know a rudimentary amount of Muay Thai, like the same amount you'll learn from getting pretty good at the UFC 5 video game. This guy gets absolutely smoked. He had no answer for the TIE Fighter's onslaught. The punches and kicks look pretty hard, but this guy is pulling his shots right before they land. That's how Muay Thai fighters spar. So this guy did get off easy if he did indeed dojo storm, but I'm sure that the lesson was learned and he either A, signed up for the next class, or B, admitted defeat and decided that the video games are a bit easier to win. Now, this one is a bit of a harsher lesson for someone challenging a professional fighter. The guy in the black shorts thought he had what it takes to hang with a professional, or maybe even beat him. I truly don't know what these guys are thinking when they get in there. Well, he eats a leg kick for his troubles, and then makes the biggest rookie mistake he could. He reached down for the next kick. Reaching for leg kicks, especially when the spar includes no grappling, is pretty dumb. He reached with the same sidearm, and the TIE fighter read this like a book. A very easy to read book. The kick goes high, and there's no arm in between shin and chin at this point. Being dumb can be fixed via a painful lesson, 
or at least, I hope this guy learned his lesson. Was this a bit too much? Should the fighter have gone a little easier, or is that head kick justified? I'm cool with it personally. I'm also cool with you hitting that like button. I really appreciate the support you all show the channel, and it does help us out a lot. Feel free to drop a comment and share the video too. Fine, you talk me into it. You can go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. Back to the action. I have not yet verified this, but apparently there are bars in Thailand with a ring and Muay Thai fighters in there, and tourists are welcome to challenge the Thai fighters to a fight or a spar. That's what it looks like is happening here. Thai fighters pretty much spar to warm up for anything. Breakfast? Let's spar first. Pad work? Let's spar first. Sparring? Let's spar first. So, taking on newcomers is a walk in the park. This drunken novice went in there and got smoked. Who knew that left hooks were a bar food? This guy was eating every shot that was sent his way. Thanks to Muay Thai God on Instagram for these last two clips. Some great content coming from that page. Be sure to check them out. Here's the rare occurrence where someone who's trained goes in and challenges a coach and or sensei. The shirtless guy obviously knows a thing or two about kicking, but the sensei knows a thing or two more. Luckily for the challenger, he wasn't punished too badly here. Allegedly, the guy in the orange shirt here is an MMA fighter, and he stormed a kung fu gym to challenge anyone there. Now, if you ask me, a hardcore fan that is trained, neither of these guys really know how to fight, but here we are. The alleged MMA fighter is looping punches and eventually does find the chin. However, Kung Fu doesn't have too much merit outside of Hollywood, so I'm not too sure we really learned anything here other than people crave violence. I'm not recommending anyone go out and challenge professional fighters in gyms, but if you do, record it. Also, a jiu-jitsu gym is your best bet. You're going to get embarrassed badly, but it's better than getting a shin cracked against your dome. This guy went to a 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu gym and challenged a trained practitioner named Chai Sirisu. The challenger is even asking if they can break knuckles, whatever that means. Chai blast doubles the heck out of this dude, and north-south chokes him within seconds. I know I've mentioned that chokes relative to head kicks don't hurt too badly, but yeah, they hurt. You can see that in how hard this guy tapped out. They go at it again, and Chai takes the challenger's back with incredible ease. The rear naked choke finds its way, and the challenger has had more than enough at this point. It looked like they were going to go for a round three, but that rear naked choke flipped a breaker in this guy's head, and he suddenly remembered that he's trash at fighting. I've said a lot of dumb things in my life, particularly in every spelling bee of my life, but I've never said anything as dumb as, Aikido is better than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. This Aikido guy dojo stormed a, you guessed it, BJJ gym, after making that claim. He then challenged a BJJ guy to a spar, and it seems like the rules were open-handed strikes and grappling were okay. So he got the taste slapped out of his mouth right away. He called for a timeout because that's what people who train the elite martial arts do. The Aikido guy gets a taste of about five seconds of a grappling exchange, and he called it quits. He only got taken down. He didn't even get to experience the hell that is someone who's great at jiu-jitsu on top of him. What do you think of this clip? Are Aikido gym phones ringing like crazy with this guy representing them? Thank you to the Bakudo BJJ YouTube channel for this clip. Someone call Bradley Martin and let him know that size doesn't beat skill. This big dude went to Robson Mora's gym and challenged anyone in there. So Robson himself said, if I beat you, you have to sign up to my gym. Deal? Deal. The big dude was caught scrambling and fell into a modified guillotine choke. He taps out pretty hard, mind you, and Robson lets go but keeps the action going. Respecting the tap is a thing for competition. During a challenge or in an actual fight, the tap can mean next to nothing. Robson wasn't going to make this guy go to sleep, but he's going to learn that jiu-jitsu works and relatively smaller guys can be the real deal. No, 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 bad shoulder, screws me. Easy. You win. I said you win. Spada did it, did it. I could have told you how this one was going to play out just by the body language in the opening second of this fight. The shirtless man is walking around like a drunk dude at a bar that got mad about a cigarette being stolen. The other guy is a pretty good fighter, so yeah, betting the house on the ladder. The drunken dude eats a head kick right away and tries to get back by rushing in. He's met with a teep kick that sets him down, and something tells me that this guy doesn't have many points in his balanced stat bar. The trained fighter continues to absolutely bully this moron 
for walking into a gym and actually thinking he could look good against a fighter when, in reality, this guy might lose to a heavy bag. There are a lot of rumors regarding the backstory to this one, but what I've gathered is that the man in the shirt used to bully the shirtless man, who's now a professional boxer. There's a big difference between bullying and being a bully, though. The bully, a noun, may try to bully, a verb, but he's unable due to the fact that he's got no hands and the boxer is really, really good at striking. This is, this, there's levels to this, kid. You can hear a coach in the background saying, there's levels to this and that could not be more true. However, we don't need him to say that when we see a live example right before our eyes. The bully's getting lit up and even tries to do that tough guy thing that you see in the movies or animes where he drops his hands. That's stupid, and I'm not surprised that he did it. Thankfully, the trained boxer showed mercy and didn't spark him right there. Body shots do put the bully down, and we're all reminded that boxing is a great way to serve justice. Quiz time. Does jiu-jitsu work? If you said yes, you passed. If you said no, go to a gym, record it, send it to us, and be featured in the next video. The guy with the longer hair is trained. He gets a hold of the challenger, takes the back, and the rear naked choke is locked in just seconds into this guy getting his wish and having a match. They go for round two, and the trained guy makes this one last a little longer. He gets the back once again, gets on top, and really makes this guy feel the boa constrictor-esque pressure that BJJ practitioners master. That pressure sucks so much. The choke is locked in once again, and the challenger got seconds of humble pie. That still wasn't enough, though. The trained guy even gave his challenger a rest period. They went at it again, and the guy with the longer hair gets on top and secures an armbar, a submission that's a little less forgiving and probably drove everything home for the challenger. Thank you to Third Eye BJJ on YouTube for this clip. A rule of thumb is to not challenge trained fighters, but if you do, ask the last name and look into it. Machado is a no-go if you're trying to maintain any ego or look cool or, you know, have any success whatsoever. This guy tried to use his muscles to bully Hegan, and he might have even thought he was doing okay for a bit. Machado was slow and steady in getting his positions. Some aspects of fighting should be fast and athletic, but some things should be slow. If you've ever had someone pass your guard slowly and weighing in on you the entire time, you know how much that sucks. Machado eventually gets to mount and it seems like he gets the tap just from pressure. It's hard to tell from this angle, but it seems like the way he's putting his weight on this guy was enough to get a frantic tap. The shirtless guy is the dojo stormer here. It looks like maybe he's done a Taekwondo class, or he was very analytical when playing Mortal Kombat. Either way, it's not enough to know how to grapple at all. The fighter in the gi gets a takedown and attacks a north-south choke. Really, he's not trying to finish here, but he's waiting for the challenger to react and the fighter will base his next move off of that. Eventually, the trained fighter does end up in mount and the challenger, having no idea what to do here, gives up his back and has dealt a rear naked choke for his troubles. Starting to see a trend here? Okay, so there are tiers to the effectiveness of martial arts. Football is not a martial art though, and it translates absolutely nothing in a fight against someone who trains. The taller and bigger man is the challenger, who thinks that his football savvy will serve him well in this grappling match. Spoiler alert, it does not. He's taken down, mounted, and feeling so much pressure from his trained counterpart. He's put in a rear naked choke, as we've seen time and time again with these kinds of videos, and has to do what I call the get up of shame, which is where you have to return to your feet while also trying to catch your breath after getting choked. Okay, so this guy isn't a street thug, but he is a jerk nonetheless. The guy in the short sleeve rash guard is an adult and is for some reason taking on a juvenile competitor. He's not too into the kid pulling guard and begins taunting even hitting him with the Nick Diaz laydown. He's not amused at all, but he's not trying to engage much himself either. The kid keeps his composure and is eventually able to get in on a leg and work his game. He locks in a heel hook, which probably shouldn't be legal as a juvenile, but he gets the tap anyways, and I'm so happy it happened. The adult was clowning a kid 
and then got out-techniqued and tapped out by a pretty savage submission. That does it for this video. How'd you like the content? Let us know down below. Be sure to like the video and share it. It really helps out the channel. What would you like to see next? Let us know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss a future upload. Catch you next time.